Thank you very much. We'll proceed to the Honorable Chief Whip of the Opposition, Honorable Kwakube. Speaker and the chairperson of the NCOP, it would be amiss of me to not express deep disappointment following the events of Thursday night in this chamber. We could never justify the disruption of the business of parliament to the point where the sergeant at arms is called to wrestle MPs off the stage. Equally, please listen. Equally, and perhaps more crucially, we cannot have a presiding officer who fails to keep the House in order despite being empowered by the rules to do so. And the failures of the presiding officers resulting in armed security forces on the floor of Parliament. This chamber is a separate arm of state with its own security personnel who do not report to the executive. Armed guards are barred from this house unless there's a threat to life. The case that the DA brought before the Constitutional Court confirms this crucial principle of the separation of powers. The scenes that we saw on Thursday night should never be repeated. That violence, that chaos has absolutely no place in a constitutional democracy. We cannot allow Parliament to degenerate in that matter. It is more so when the people of South Africa are looking to their public representatives for solutions to the crises that they face daily. There has never been a time since the dawn of democracy that our country needed to hear from the President about the issues that are the perpetual albatrosses around their necks. Instead, the President delivered a state of disaster. It is the disaster that has come to characterize his term in office. It is the disaster that is his cabinet. It is the disaster that is the caucus of the ANC of the Sith Parliament. <laughs> Speaker, allow me to perhaps direct this to the President because I fear the trappings of power and the cushion of executive office has left us with a head of state that is completely out of touch with the issues facing South Africans. Sir, people are forced to make choices that are perhaps beyond your grasp. A choice between a meal or a taxi fare. Young people are without work. They have no hope. All they have is a life of indignity because of joblessness. Umbuto we ANC was mise lubango shoshezabo. Umbuto onga kwaz onga kwazu guba imali ebekelwe abantu ge kashalika pupane we COVID-19. Ama kombre tae chinch iselana e kupisana ngoku kimali abantu. U premia tube apa, u premia tube ngube, ebezwaz ngomba isifuba, apa kodwa abantu base tekwini si tetanje, ba data enyu nyuini inkonzo as. Zee abantu ine. Jengom 
Ndicho, ndicho kho, ugu, nicho kho, ugu ba nani lwele inkulu lego yesi sizwe. Kodwa ngu kinsekle ngoku, seninga ba tunezele babanda ba mnyama, abange atatindweni. Abazali betu, ba temba inguka ezo mbete ifelele kusha hapangani. I have no doubt in my mind that the founders of your organization who are towering figures in our history books can no longer recognize their party under this current crop of leaders. You have brought this country to its knees, you have nailed the coffin and created a nation in disaster. I want to agree with Minister Zulu when she congratulates the SA women's cricket team for their victory. But Minister, I want to take it a step further. And I want to say to you, the women's cricket team needs to be paid and they need to be paid equally. The platitudes are not going to work. They need to get what's worth to them. Listening to the speakers in this debate, it is no wonder that we find ourselves in a state of paralysis. Minister Gungubele leveled an attack on the best run metro in the country, an accolade his country could never dream of doing. Perhaps I should give you insight as to why the city of Cape Town is the golden goose, as Honorable Manamela says. The Honorable Manamela, who is the perpetual deputy minister, I really hope during your reshuffle this time, President, you're going to finally appoint him because he's been pretzeling, auditioning for that job for decades now. Let me educate you about how we did this. The DA wrestled the city from the ANC, ran a multi-party coalition government, subsequently won a majority, cleaned out the corruption, and began the long, hard process of building a world-class city. As we speak, this metro is the only one that spends its largest portion of its budget on the poor. It is the only city that has the lowest unemployment rate against the national one. It is now one of the few DA governments that is seeking to free itself from and its citizens from ESCOM. Every single independent service delivery barometer in this country. Where we have governed with a majority, we are doing the same. We attempted the same model in the city of Johannesburg before the checkbook politics of the ANC kicked in into full swing. In Swane, we inherited a 16-year legacy of disastrous ANC governance where the likes of Sputla were using the city as their ATM. The process of uncovering and cleaning out the rot meant that service delivery suffered and that the true state of the city's finances come, finally came to bear. However, we don't hold ourselves to the same standard as the ANC. Where we were voted out in Johannesburg because we refused to hand over the safe keys to criminals, we took to the opposition benches to hold the government to account. Where service delivery, where service delivery and financial management was not at the standard that we expect in Swane, we held our own to account. I can understand that the concept of accountability and transparency is foreign to the ANC. President Ramaphosa would rather add another minister to deal with the energy crisis than fire ministers Gwede Mantashe and Pravin Gordon, who have dragged us into a state of disaster. But Mr. President, I must say, it is cruel, even for Ringalan Zinzi, a fan of Minister Mandashe, for him to hear about his demotion during Sona like the rest of us. A quick WhatsApp message could have done, Mr. President. To add insult to injury, it is reported that the former mayor of Tswane, who presented over the decay and destruction of that city, Sputla Ramukhoba, is now likely going to be this minister of electricity. In the ANC, ineptitude and corruption is rewarded with executive office. Colleagues, if we are to start rescuing South Africa from the ANC's disastrous years, then we must start ensuring that Parliament works. When Parliament works, South Africa will work. A Parliament that works would have never nominated and elected a Speaker who has a questionable record in government and who views Parliament as an extension of the executive. A working parliament would have grabbed the opportunity with both hands following the Zondo Commission report into state capture. 
under this speaker, there's a deliberate reluctance to deal with the findings of the report. A working parliament would not have shamelessly shielded a sitting president from accountability from multiple crimes that took place on his farm. It would have voted to investigate the president. Indeed, ours, ours is not a functioning parliament because otherwise we would have established a portfolio committee for the presidency. And now to the most important people, the people at home, whose lives have been plunged into darkness, I urge you to be angry. I urge you to be angrier than usual. Our resilience as na a nation should not be taken as license to be abused. We do not have to tolerate this corruption, the poor service delivery, and the and state of disaster. Let us take our anger to the polls. Let's vote out the ANC. Let's vote them out. Thank you very much.